All right, now that we got the intros out of the way, let's start program. If you're working with me in the same environment, let's go through the steps that are involved. The first thing that you want to do is you want to go into your team works panel. Once you go in there, you'll see that you have all these directories. The directory we care about is the web directory because that's going to be the one that's going to be publicly accessible through the web. All right, so I'm going to open up the folder by double clicking on it. And once the folder is open, what I want to do is I want to create a, a subfolder because that, because that's where I want to put all of my projects from here on. So I'm going to click on that uh, right menu uh, on the side menu that is where the arrow is and select create new folder. And I'm going to call that folder projects. All right. So inside of my projects folder, I'm going to double click to open it up as well. And again, I'm going to create another folder inside of it. And that new folder is going to be HTML. All right, so now we have our HTML project inside of our projects. All that's left for me to do is to actually double click into it. Oh, and I, it looks like the name didn't catch. So let me just click here and maybe try to rename. Oh, that, the name did catch, it just didn't update it. So, you know, let me get small bugs because it's a, a relatively new uh, system. Uh, kind of cool one, but you know, every, every system has bugs when they first start. All right. So now that we have our HTML folder, it's time for us to finally create our first application. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to create a completely new empty text file so we could have uh, basically something to work on. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to give that new file a name and I'm going to call this HTML. Well, let's call this lesson1.html. Now it's important that I name the file .html if you're new to HTML. Whenever you're creating a client-side driven HTML page, you call it .html. When you create that file using PHP, it's called a .php file. And there's a lot of different types of applications that you build, but the final output is always HTML. But if you're creating it not dynamically, like we're going to do right now, where we're manually going to create and we're not building it out on a server, we always want to name our file, whatever the file name is, .html. I want to say just one more thing even before we start uh, digging deeper into this. So one is, by default, most servers have a default path. And what I mean by that, and I'm just going to save that file for a second, and we will forgive the small bugs. Again, so you can see the name didn't rename, so I'm just going to double click to refresh it, open, close, so our, the name will refresh. Now, if you go back to that file name, notice that you have your an eyeball. Just click on the eyeball and what will happen is going to open up inside of this internal browser. But what I really want to do, I want to grab that and I'm just going to open it up in a completely empty browser. And you can see that every account that you have with coding gives you a, a public URL where you could actually test your application. I personally prefer not working with the internal browser mainly because this is not the output of the actual IDE of how we want it to actually look like. So it's a good idea when you're working in HTML in general have it open in all of your browsers as you're working and progressing because different browsers many times have different ways that they implement small little details. But let's go back into this main topic. You know, we're giving this overall big picture about how to work with files in HTML. So one is you can see that we already see our file. It's empty. So we see an empty page, which makes a lot of sense. Now, if I delete the actual name of the file and I just hit direct the directory directly, you'll notice that we could actually, it depends on the server. If you were running on a different server, you might not, you might see you're an error saying you don't have access to this area. But in our case, it actually lists out the file that are inside of the server and also shows us that um, in this directory, there's one file called lesson1.html and we could even go a parent directory up. Now we don't really need to, but if we went up, we would go into the projects and we could see that there was a folder HTML and we could travel all our way down inside of it again. Now, in general, if you wanted this directory to be the main directory where it would output whatever you what one specific file, the usual default on servers, and we're not going to go into changing those defaults, but usually the default is index.html or index.php or index whatever language you were working on. Now, there's a lot of different languages, and we're not going to cover all of them, and maybe you already have heard of PHP and, and of .NET and a lot of other languages that pro programmers program on the web. What they do then, they're building basically applications that are dynamic, but the actual content that is actually rendered onto the screen is always HTML. Browsers only know how to decrypt HTML. They don't really accept other data types. Now, 
in HTML, there's also bundled a lot of other stuff like JavaScript and CSS, which we'll touch briefly and we'll talk about that really soon. But just for what we need for this point in time, we want to understand basically files and where they are and how they work. And now that we're working on a, a, on a host auto directly, everything we do will automatically be uh, transparent and be visible in the host as we're doing it, which is kind of awesome. Now, if you're not working with this platform, then obviously you would want to, well, maybe not obviously, so maybe you want to check out our course on HTML with mom, which you could find wherever you found this course, uh, which goes through the steps of do uh, a lot slower and it goes through the steps of how do you upload files onto a site and so on and so forth. So do follow, check us, uh, check us out in there, but I do recommend you go through this flow because it's an awesome flow to be able to work and directly see your changes on a live server, which I think is really awesome and it's very straightforward. So let's see how do we do that. So first of all, I'm going to just go into, I want to show you how do we actually make that HTML add directory not accessible by actually putting something there so users would always see something when they hit that HTML file. So I'm going to click here into my HTML lesson one, and I'm just going to click here and I'm going to rename the file. And instead of calling it lesson one.html, I'm going to call this index.html. Once I named that file and I saved it as index.html, and I'm just going to, again, just close the folder and open the folder again just to refresh it because the name wasn't changing, which I'm sure is a bug that will be fixed really soon. And if I click on refresh and we'll look at that refresh, we'll see now we see that actual HTML page, that actual index.html is showing us, showing off, even though we're not actually explicitly naming it, which sometimes is a nice thing to do because then, especially if it's your actual landing page, so if it's the actual landing page where you are and you want people to be able to see something, so you could see you could have a page here without some typing dot something without the user needing to have a long URL. Now, in this case, if we wanted to see what was actually there, we could see it's actually index.html as well. And that's exactly the file. So we could even access it directly by typing index.html. And we would be directed to the exact same page. All right, so let me just click back, back, back. And that's all I really wanted to talk about the actual file structures and what you really want to and need to know about how to work with your files on a server. In the next video, we're going to dive right into HTML and start looking at our first tags and understand the different ways you could work with HTML. So see you in the next video.